If you are an entrepreneur who wants to get to that next revenue level and get more time back in your life, then you have to start thinking about and working on your processes. Hey there, my loves. Welcome back to CPTV. I'm CP, and this is the place for aspiring and growing entrepreneurs who want to turn their passions into businesses and their businesses into six and seven figure empires. So if that sounds like you, then you are going to want to come on in, take a look around, check out some other content and subscribe because every single Tuesday, I am giving you the strategies and the step-by-step actionable training for you to implement immediately in your business and get to that level of entrepreneurial freedom that you deserve and desire. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you don't miss any of it. And of course, if you like it, then show me. Smash that like button and say, I'm ready to scale CP in the comments below. That's what I want you to say for me today, okay? So I'm not sure if I have really mentioned this before. I think that I have a couple of times, but I'm just like most of you working on implementing my 2021 goals and strategies. And after I went on my CEO's retreat last year and mapped out my SWAT and put together all my objectives and did all of that business planning and strategy development, at the end of last year. And um, well, for those of you who haven't already seen it and had a chance to catch, I will go ahead and link to my walkthrough video where I kind of walk you through my growth planning process and take you on my growth planning retreat. So I'll link to that right here, right now. But in any case, when I was doing that, a huge piece of our growth strategy includes optimizing our business processes. And the number one reason why I came up with that strategy is because I have always known and always believed that the true scalability of your business is tied to how many documented business processes you actually have. And those processes are also directly tied to how much freedom you have as an entrepreneur. Now, business documentation and process documentation and mapping and Lean Six Sigma and all of those things can be really, really confusing for most people. So as I go through my strategy of business process improvement and tweaking my current documentation and my SOPs, I thought that it would be helpful for you if I do it with my CPTV family right? We can do it together. And I can teach you what I know about creating and developing and documenting business processes. I can teach you the good, the bad, and the ugly about the whole thing. Because if you are an entrepreneur who wants to get to that next revenue level and get more time back in your life, then you have to start thinking about and working on your processes. You find out very quickly where you're in the middle of running around like a chicken with your head cut off, that processes are critical to sanity and important to your business. So in essence, I am about to blitz y'all with so many business process related training and content. I am going to lay it all out there and give you everything I've got about creating them and documenting them and what they should look like. We will touch on every single process that's in your business over the next six to eight weeks. Okay, you're going to be in CP's process lab and today kicks it all off because today we are going to start from the beginning and I'm going to talk to you about what business processes are, when you should create them, why you have to have them and what are the essential factors that you must include in them so that they are good ones and documented well. So if you're just getting into business process mapping and thinking through and creating your processes and you know you need them, then keep watching. And I have a free gift for you. So stick around until the end. All right. Great. So let's get to work. Okay. So let's start with what is a business process? 
Well, some people refer to business processes or systems and they kind of interchange them. And some people get confused with the word systems because they interchange that word in their minds with technology systems. Regardless of whether it's a business process or a business system to you, it is defined CP style as a standardized repeatable series of tasks that you can follow in order to get to a consistent end result or goal. So in essence, it's something that you do over and over and over again in order to ensure that it's going to be done well and that you're going to get a consistent result every single time. So when you think about it that way, everything that you do in your business is a process. I mean, our whole lives, really, when you think about it, are processes, Like, have you ever been interrupted in the morning when you are like getting dressed? You're in the middle of your whole routine and you're trying to get ready and go somewhere or you're trying to get ready to go to work and you are moving through your normal routine, you know, at a nice clip. You got your music playing, you're doing your thing and all of a sudden somebody interrupts you and you get into the car and then you realize you ain't even brush your teeth. I know, right? And you're like, how did I forget to brush my teeth? Like teeth brushing is basic. And then you realize that's right. Christian interrupted me this morning because when he interrupted my normal process, it caused me to mess up and forget about my teeth. So you'll actually walk out the house with some stankin' breath, okay? (laughs) Or have you ever been on autopilot because you have a process for driving into work every day? And that drive is the exact same drive every single day. You go the exact same way every single time. And then one day, You're not going to work, okay? But you are in your driving process. So you look up and you done pulled into the parking lot at your job on a Saturday. And you're like, why am I here? Exactly, because you were in the process. And that's exactly what business processes do for you too. If you create a step-by-step list of tasks that get done in the same order every single time and you continue to do them in the exact same way every single time, you have created a process for getting something done and achieving a goal in your business. And once you've done that over and over and over again, it becomes a no-brainer for you to do it that way. And better yet, it becomes a no-brainer for your future team and your future employees. So business processes are critical to being able to get consistent results, okay? So if you want to see good results in various aspects of your business that are consistent good results, then a process is absolutely necessary. Now that I've told you what they are, doesn't it make sense that you have to spend time actually putting them together? You have to think through what they are. You have to actually write them down so that they can ultimately be delegated to someone else. Because that might be the one thing that I think is missing from that CP definition that I just gave you. And that is transferability. You want to create tasks or steps in your process that are easily transferable to others. Because when you do, you're going to be teaching them a habit. And if they do it the exact same way every single time, they'll always get the same results as well. Then you can just focus on optimization and tweaking to improve the results. That's kind of where I am this year. Now, that brings me to the next topic. When should you create your business processes? When really does, you know, think about them from, I would say, when should you begin documenting them? When should you begin thinking about them? Um, When should you actually be putting them in place? And I get that question a lot. And I know I've said it before. And if you are a student of mine, you've heard me say it a million times. You need to create your processes from the very beginning. As soon as you start doing stuff, you definitely want to document the steps of what you're doing. Like the very first time you send an email response to one of your customers, instead of just emailing them and open up a Word document, 
type the email in that Word document, copy and paste it into your email message because you're going to want to save that and send it. And now you've got an email template for that response that you're going to get every single time. So every time a customer asks you the same question, all you have to do is copy and paste. Better yet, when you hire a customer service person and you get a customer service system in place, you can add it as a canned response or give it to that customer service person. That way you're responding to your customers the exact same way every single time. And you do that because it's documented. And guess what? The next time that you send that email, you won't be winging it. You don't even have to think about what to say. All you got to do is copy and paste it. Look how much more efficient you just became. Now, let's just say you are already doing some things in your business and you don't already have documented processes. You didn't necessarily start at the beginning. Um, if you don't have any processes and you're just, they're just living in your head somewhere, now is the time to document them. Right now is the time. Before you get so many that you need to actually document that it becomes overwhelming and impossible for you to actually do. So if you didn't do it from the beginning, it's okay but you need to do it right now. You definitely need to do it immediately and especially before you bring anybody onto your team or outsource anything to anybody or that relationship will be an effort in futility and it will fail. They will not have success because you will not be able to equip them with a process to follow in order for them to achieve the results that you're going to expect them to achieve, which are the results that you achieved from doing the process that you never documented and actually gave to them. Do I need to pull Asher out? Do I? No, I'm going to go ahead and leave Asher out of this one but you get where I'm going, don't you? You cannot expand your team. You cannot gain leverage. You cannot hire someone else into your business to do the things that you were doing until you have documented your processes. And until you do have someone on your team that can do the things that you are currently doing, you will never really truly have freedom. That's why I did that CPTV episode about how to gain freedom in your business. And I'm talking about documenting your processes in it. And I'll go ahead and link to that video right here so that you can check that out. But that's why I said that because true freedom in your business means that you can step away from it and you've got a team of people that are still going to do things to keep the business running and making money. And you can't hire that team of people until you've given them some processes to follow, which means you got to document them. And since I'm already on this soapbox, I might as well go ahead and start talking about why you must have processes or continue talking about why you must have processes, right? And I mean, I've already touched on a couple of the things already, right? So number one, you'll never really truly have freedom in your business if you don't have processes, okay? Number two, your business will never function efficiently and it will never be optimized to really truly drive additional revenue into your life if you don't have processes. Number three, you won't have enough sales because you'll be too slow at selling. In order to create the volume that you're going to need to drive revenue, you'll be selling too slow because every single time you try to make a sale, you're going to be starting over from scratch and starting from scratch takes a long ass time. Okay. And the reason is because you don't have a documented process to follow every single time. You don't have any templates. You don't have any tools created. And when you're slow at selling, you sell less. And when you sell less, you make less money. Number four, you won't keep your customers when you don't have good processes in place. Get it? Your customer experience will be very, very inconsistent because every single time they get some type of service, it's going to be something brand new or different. It's not a step-by-step -step process and inconsistent customer experiences lead to unhappy customers. And when you get unhappy customers, 
they leave or they cancel or they request refunds. And then you have crappy retention rates and your business can't grow if you don't add and retain your clients. Actually, it's so much cheaper to retain a client than it is to acquire a new one. So client retention targets should be a major priority for you. And if you don't have processes in your business on how you deliver the services or deliver the products to your customers, you will not be able to retain them. It is what it is. And number five, you will become completely overwhelmed and the passion that you once had for your business will slowly creep away. You'll feel like you're working all the time and getting absolutely nowhere. And you won't even see the light at the end of the tunnel. You'll never believe that you could ever hire someone to help you or outsource something because you're running around half the time feeling disorganized and not knowing what to do, right? Well, it's probably because every single time you do something, it feels brand new. It feels like you're winging it. And it probably feels like that because it is brand new. (laughs) You are winging it, remember? You ain't got no processes because you've never taken the time to document the processes that you're already doing. Okay, so I'm going to get off that soapbox, okay? But I still want to make sure that we talk about the essential factors that you have to include in order for a process to be a good one. But before I talk about that, I mentioned your free gift and I want you to go ahead and grab that free gift. Okay. The link is in the comments and the description below, or you can just go to CherylCPerez.com forward slash process guide and download my guide to creating processes that scale with an SOP template. And it's free. And it's for you. And if you've already grabbed my other SOP template from my other video, that is it. This is it on steroids and it is completely updated. So you're going to want to grab this one too. I told y'all we was going to do this together. Okay. That's going to be an amazing guide. So let's talk about these essential factors because the question that I do get very frequently is where do I start? Well, the guide will help you with some of that. And my upcoming episodes are also going to help you that content that's coming. But you always want to start with a very well-defined and finite process. You want to be as specific as possible. And it has to have a start and a stop. The second factor is that the process must be simple and repeatable. So you have to spell it out in a way that the steps can be done like over and over and over again in the same order pretty easily so that it can become a habit for you and for someone else. Third, it has to be detailed and transferable so that someone who has never done it before can read it, learn exactly what to do and repeat it the exact same way that you would. And the fourth essential factor of a good business process is that it has to be documented and tracked, honey. I hear you. I hear you saying in your head right now, I've got processes. I mean, you know, I do the exact same thing every single time that I do A, B, or C. But that doesn't matter if all of those processes are in your head. Again, scaling, right? That's what you want, right? Freedom, right? Work less hours, right? Automate things, right? You want to do all of those things. Then you have to get those processes out of your head and into a document process. An an SOP, which stands for Standard Operating Procedure. So are you ready to go on this process improvement journey with me in 2021, y'all? If so, say I'm ready in the comments below and make sure that you subscribe because like I said, I'm giving away hella content on business processes over the next few weeks and you won't want to miss it. So make sure you grab your guide below and if you are fired up, like this video, share this video, and until next time, my loves, stay safe. Bye-bye.